Buying a laptop has never been more confusing. There are so many different ones. Which should you buy? Well, today I'm gonna to make it super easy. When picking the perfect laptop, the first thing that you need to decide is what kind of user are you? Do you have light computing needs? Do you need some performance? Or do you need the most performance possible? I'm gonna recommend laptops for all three today. But before I do, I have a favor to ask. Only 17% of our viewers are subscribed. We wanna make high quality videos for you and we want to make more of them. That way we can cover all the tech that you are asking us to. You can make a real difference by just clicking that subscribe button. I and the entire team would appreciate it. Now, we're gonna start with laptops for people with light computing needs. This means you primarily use your laptop for browsing the web, working on office documents, studying, and that sort of thing. This doesn't mean that these laptops won't allow you to do something more. For example, some programming, creative work, or even some gaming. So long as your projects or games are simple, these laptops have you covered. Let's start with Apple's MacBook Airs and even their base MacBook Pros. These are laptops that you buy, enjoy, and you just don't have issues with. They are very snappy. Their integrated graphics are very powerful, in particular the MacBook Pro 14 with the M4 chip. This will allow you to do some creative work like video editing, so long as your projects are simple as I said. As with all Apples, if you're using them for light use, you won't be annoyed by things like heat and fan noise, as there just isn't any. Macs also have the best battery life. You may see Windows laptops reporting long battery life, but this is usually for the most basic of tasks, like playing a movie back. In the real world, when you're using a variety of applications, MacBooks have the longest battery life. They also just don't cheap out on the little things. You get better quality webcams, better sounding speakers, and more accurate haptic trackpads. But what happens if you just don't want a Mac? You prefer Windows or even Linux? Look for an Intel laptop with one of their new Lunar Lake processors. They're also known as Core Ultra 2. Laptops with these processors give you snappy performance for everyday tasks and long battery life. Not quite as good as MacBooks, but better than Windows laptops of old. Where they outshine the Macs though is the variety of laptops available and their broad application support, particularly for gaming. This is relevant as these laptops have strong integrated graphics. Playing light games is very viable. The main downside of these new Intel laptops is their poor multi-core performance. This is what demanding applications need. But don't fear, this won't get in the way of basic multitasking between applications like Office and Chrome. You've got plenty of performance for that. Although I don't love poor multi-core performance, it's a sacrifice that I think is fine for light users. My favorites are the HP Omnibook Ultra Flip, the Yoga Slim 7i Or Edition, and the ZenBook S14. The Flip is an all-round premium two-in-one with an OLED display and a haptic trackpad. The Yoga Slim 7i Or Edition is a light and portable laptop that has a large 15.3 inch display. The ZenBook S14 is the one to get if you want maximum portability. It's very light and has long battery life. Links to all the laptops I mentioned, by the way, will be in the description and on our website, justjosh.tech. In fact, our website has a built-in price tracker to ensure that you're getting the best deals on them. It also lists specific pros and cons of each laptop that give you more depth than my brief mention of them today. Now, when you're shopping, you may find laptops with Intel's older Core Ultra Series 1 Meteor Lake processors. I'd only buy one of these at a steep discount, as they can feel warm to the touch with some fan noise, and they have worse battery life. Our website still page tracks laptops on such massive discounts. One of the ones that I recommend watching out for is HP Spectre 14. It's a very good all-round laptop. It's basically the prior version of the HP Omnibook Ultra Flip that I just mentioned. If you see Intel laptops with even older processors like their 13th gen, be careful. These are very inefficient. Either you get slow laptops from their U-series range, or they feel very warm, have fan noise, and terrible battery life. Only buy one of these if they are on monstrous discounts. Next, let's talk about the new breed of laptops with Qualcomm Snapdragon X processors. These burst onto the scene mid-2024 with a ton of hype. Some of this was from sponsored videos that Qualcomm themselves paid YouTubers for. To cut a long story short, these processors solved a lot of issues of Windows laptops at the time. Heat, fan noise, and poor battery life. I feel like I'm mentioning these three a lot, but these have seriously been such a big issue for Windows laptops of old. Anyway, Snapdragon laptops went a big way to solving these, but unfortunately they introduced a new issue. Snapdragon laptops use the ARM architecture, which requires a different version of both Windows and the applications you run on it. For light users, Office, web browsers, and communication tools all have been updated. But if you ever venture out and use more specialized software, say you want to try DJing on your laptop, you may hit issues. The software or the peripherals you want to use may not run or don't run well. Buying a laptop with one of these processes is a risk. 
Given that Intel's Lunar Lake processor now solves many of the same issues as the Snapdragon laptops and they don't have this downside, it kind of makes Snapdragon laptops a bit dead on arrival, at least for light users who just don't need the better multi-core performance that these chips bring. That being said, you should buy a laptop based on the sum of its parts and whether it's a good deal, not just the processor inside. So long as the software that you want to run will work, there are a couple of good Snapdragon laptops out there. The Surface Laptop 7 is my favourite for light users. It is a very solid all-round premium laptop, and it has a reasonable price. Hint, save some money by buying the X Plus variant. We bought both the X Plus and the X Elite versions, and we have a video out comparing them which I will link below. Finally, we have AMD. They haven't released any new processors for light users. Their fantastic Zen 5 chips are only available in their higher end Ryzen 9 range. These deliver performance that is a bit unnecessary for light users. I'll be discussing these laptops in the next section, which is for those who want performance. Anyway, just like laptops with older Intel processors, you can still find ones with AMD's older 7000 and 8000 series. Only buy one of these if it is on a big sale, as they have similar issues. Our favourite ones are the ZenBook 14 OLED and the HP Pavilion Aero 13. Alright, now we're going to switch gears and talk about laptops for people who need performance. Programmers, audio engineers, creators, or those who want to get serious about gaming. I'm going to start with Apple once again, as they are the easiest to talk about here. If you can afford to buy a MacBook Pro and the applications you run will work, that's what you should get. I know there are going to be viewers out there who will accuse me of being an Apple shill or some similar nonsense, but I owe it to you to call it as it is. Right now, Windows laptops for performance users are uncompetitive with Apple's M4 MacBook Pros. The M4 chips perform better and their power efficiency just destroys those from Intel, AMD and Qualcomm. That means they last a lot longer on battery when doing real performance tasks, and they have less heat and fan noise while doing so. Plus, they're just more premium all-round machines, as I said. The little things like the trackpad, speakers and webcam are just better. If you want to know which MacBook to buy, I do have a guide out that I'll link below. But once again, what happens if you just don't want a Mac? Maybe they're too expensive, perhaps you want Nvidia graphics, or you're just too stubborn. We understand. Anyway, for Windows laptops, get one with an AMD Zen 5 processor. These processors consistently deliver better performance for the same power draw as Intel's Core Ultra 9s. This really matters for people who want a performance machine, as normally you'd get a lot of fan noise and heat. These AMD ones have significantly less. This difference between AMD and Intel, by the way, isn't just something you see in benchmarks. I have identical Zephyrus G16s, one with an AMD Zen 5 processor and one with an Intel Core Ultra 9. The Zen 5 laptop runs noticeably cooler and quieter. And on that note, my two favourite Zen 5 laptops are the Zephyrus G16 I just talked about and the ProArt P16. They are pretty much the same laptop with the same RTX 4060 or 4070 dedicated graphics. The G16 is the gaming variant and it has a fast refresh rate display. The ProArt is the creator variant with a sharper 4K display that is limited to 60Hz. The ProArt can be had with more memory though, up to 64 gigs. This may be important as memory is not upgradable on either of these laptops. Now, you may see performance laptops still being sold with an older AMD Zen 4 processor, the 7000 or 8000 HS series. Asus's popular Zephyrus G14 has one of these chips. These are noticeably worse than the Zen 5 ones that I already talked about, so only buy a laptop with one of these if once again it's on a big sale and you really like other factors about the machine. When it comes to Intel, in the performance space, they have their Core Ultra 7 and 9 from their Meteor Lake range. The Core Ultra 7 just doesn't deliver enough performance to be competitive for these kind of machines. The Core Ultra 9 does, but as I said, it is noticeably worse than a laptop with AMD Zen 5. So again, only buy on a big sale. Lenovo's Yoga Pro 9 is my favourite. It is such a solid all-round machine. Its keyboard is more comfortable than the Asus laptops I just talked about, and it somehow bucks the Intel curse by never feeling warm even under performance use. It also does not have that much fan noise. It has a stunning mini-LED fast refresh rate display. If you want something more gaming focused, check out the Acer Predator series or the Alienware M16 or X16. Now. If you see laptops with Intel's older Raptor Lake processors known as their 13th and 14th gen, like Gigabyte's Aero range has, these are significantly worse. Only huge discounts make these worth buying. Lenovo's Legion 7i in Glacier White is a good one, but please note it does get very warm to the touch. Rounding out laptops for those who want performance, I want to talk once again about Qualcomm Snapdragon laptops. 
These deliver very solid multi-core performance at lower power draws. This means you can find high performance laptops in very thin and portable chassis, yet they still have decent battery life and run cool and quiet. However, for buyers who are looking for a laptop for performance use, you need to be super careful. You're likely using specialized applications. Several of these still do not run natively on this hardware. Just think about it. If you're a smaller developer, why would you prioritize developing for this hardware versus more common platforms? Anyway, there is a chance that what you need to run may not work or won't work well. And for gamers, a ton of games don't run. Heck, you can't even get one of these laptops with dedicated graphics. So Snapdragon laptops are only a good choice if you are certain that your applications that you need to run both now and in the future will work well. If you are sure, my favorite is Lenovo Slim 7X. It's a very thin and light laptop with a stunning 14.5 inch OLED panel. Funnily enough, it doesn't have the most powerful Snapdragon processor, but it outperformed all the other ones we tested. All right, we're now going to talk about how to pick laptops for people who want the absolute most performance that they can possibly get. These are laptops for people who are doing complex rendering, training machine learning models, or who want to play the latest AAA games at max settings. If that sounds like you, there really are only two viable choices. Apple's MacBook Pros with their M4 Max chips are just a fantastic option. Just like I said earlier, these are what you should buy if you don't need Nvidia graphics and your applications run on macOS. No Windows laptop delivers this kind of incredible performance in such a compact portable package. Yet, these MacBooks still have long battery life, less heat and fan noise, even under performance use. Windows laptops don't even come close. That being said, if you don't want a Mac, the only way to go is a laptop with Intel's 13th or 14th gen HX chips. These are based on their older Raptor Lake technology, which means they are not power efficient. Be prepared for lots of fan noise and a big heavy laptop with a large chunky power brick. Our favorites are the Legion Pro 7i, Electronix Hydrox 16, and the Asus Strixgar 16 or 18. None are perfect, we list our pros and cons for each of them on our website like I said. And they are all very expensive, but they are powerful. Buying tip, Intel's 13th gen and their 14th gen from their HX line, basically the same processor. The 14th gen has a slightly higher max gigahertz. Nvidia's graphics though, it hasn't changed between these generations. So you may be able to save big by buying one of the older models. Now, I haven't talked about how much memory or storage you should get. Luckily, that decision is a bit simpler. For people with light computing needs, 16 gig of memory and 512 gig of storage is what you should aim for. That being said, if all you can afford is eight gig of memory, do not panic applications will run. In fact, if you're on a tight budget, I'd prefer you buy a better laptop like the MacBook Air with M1 with a lesser amount of memory and storage than a worse one with more. For performance users, 32 gig of memory and one terabytes of storage is probably what you should target as a baseline. Well, that's it. I hope that I helped you pick your next laptop. Before I go, I can't say this enough, check out our website, justjosh.tech. We scour the internet for the best deals and compile them all there. Laptop prices, they fluctuate constantly, so we have that super helpful price tracker. YouTuber Shtick Time support the channel by getting subscribed and clicking that like button. It makes a real difference and will help us create better videos for you. Good luck with your laptop buying and go do something awesome with your day and I will catch you later.